Hello everyone, so this is going to be another squad breakdown video. Uh, it's going to be a video about suppression, the effects of suppression, how to suppress effectively. Uh, it's also going to be kind of a demonstration of like react to contact and stuff like that. And uh, just once again, to be clear, this is during a squad ops one life event. So suppression has more of an effect in these one life events because players don't want to die because, you know, that's their one life. It does, suppression in my opinion still has a place in vanilla play. Uh, it's of course less effective because players aren't worried about dying as much because they can just respawn. But I'd still believe that suppression has quite an effect on players if utilized properly. So we're just going to be running through this uh, short engagement. I have my perspective as well as the enemy's perspective. And uh, we're just going to be going around talking about things you can take from this video about how do you suppress a fire. So to set the stage, this is Operation Sawtooth, which is a Russian attack versus militia. My role in this operation is the single MMG in the platoon. I'm the only one with the PKM. And our objective is to search the woods across the river for the enemy hideout and destroy it. So right now we're in a travel formation and we're uh, about to cross the river. Uh, and we really weren't expecting contact this far away from the object objective. We're in a travel formation. Like I said, we're not bounding or anything like that. We're just in a column and we're just trying to get across the river uh, as fast as possible to engage the enemy and find their uh, objective. So we're not expecting contact. We're all talking to each other, and I'll just play out what happens. So immediately, as you can see, the first half of the platoon, as they pretty much reach the opposite side of the river, and as uh, the second squad is dead in the center of the river, uh, which is right about here, they get engaged by an enemy force uh, on our right flank. And uh, it catches us completely off guard. Everyone starts to break. And uh, there's a couple things you want to do as soon as you hit contact, especially in an ambush like this. Number one is to grab cover. Number two, return fire. Number three, locate the enemy. Number four, maneuver. Right? That's essentially a very you know, clean breakdown of what you should be doing as a player, as a squad leader, as a fire team leader. That's the priorities you need to have when you get engaged uh, unexpectedly. Right? Cover, re, uh, engage the enemy, uh, locate, maneuver, and uh, yeah. So first thing you can do, like instantaneously, as soon as those first rounds land, I'm booking it to cover, which is these rocks. These are good rocks. Rocks are good cover. Uh, I know it's on the enemies engaging from the right flank because I saw an RPG whiz by from, uh, right to left. So I already know contact's going to be on the other side of these rocks. These rocks are really good. I've got the PKM. I need to start slaying uh, rounds towards this uh, enemy ambush. So I start booking it. You can hear squad mate saying, get some cover, get some cover. Um, I get up on the hill, I'm looking for the target, and instantaneously, one thing you need to be watching out for are tracers, right? Tracers show you exactly where to shoot. Uh, both, you know, friendly tracers point towards the enemy, and enemy tracers trace them back to the uh, origin, right? So I immediately spot where they're firing from, and it's a pretty good location, right? It's elevated, they have good concealment, there's trees up there, there's rocks up there for cover, uh, and they can see pretty much the entire first two squads that cross the river. So my immediate reaction right now is, we're in deep trouble. We have two squads in the open, they're getting engaged from a defended, uh, well-positioned location. I need to suppress this element as fast as possible. So that's what I do. I get down, deploy the bipod, and engage. You can hear my squad leader as well, so I stop, set up the base of fire. This is essentially because the first half of the platoon is engaged. They are locked down, essentially. They're pinned. They can't, they're not going to be effective at all. What we can do, however, is the second, uh, or the third and fourth squad in the column, which is the second half of the platoon, was behind that rock face when we got engaged. So the enemy doesn't know we're here, or they haven't engaged us directly yet, only the first half of the platoon. So we have the opportunity to maneuver, get cover, uh, without being harassed too much, set up and engage, and that's the orders that come through. Uh, the command is from our squad leader to our fire team leader. That's what we start doing. Um, and so I start throwing rounds all over this hill. Now, a couple things to note is that I'm not just shooting at one place. I'm not going for accurate shots. I'm not looking to kill one player by one player. My immediate 
job right now is to decrease their effective fire and i do that best by hitting as many or near as many enemy players as possible rapidly and uh, keeping that up for as long as possible right right now i'm the only uh, mmg if i had a secondary mmg i would have worried a little bit more about talking my weapon and stuff like that but the first couple seconds out of the gate of an ambush are the most lethal for the enemy that's when they're going to cause the most casualties uh so right now i'm just concerned about getting rounds out because the first half of our platoon is engaged they're not going to be throwing effective fire back it's my job and uh, my squad's job to engage this and su effectively suppress this position as much as possible so i just start going really heavy on the trigger uh, you'll notice i'll pause the uh the weapon for a couple seconds and the reason why i do this is because every time i let off the trigger i pull the weapon down and i'm looking for my tracers if the tracers are landing too low i readjust aim the gun higher for the second burst or the follow-up burst and so i'm breaking only enough to watch where my rounds are going and ensuring that they're landing at the uh, right distance because i didn't fiddle around with my ranging because the first thing i want to do is i didn't want to sit there for an even an extra second to try to get the ranging down i just wanted to get rounds out as soon as possible so you see me do that as well a second thing you'll see me do is i spread that uh i spread that pkm over the entire hill not just the top not just the left not just the right not just the bottom i hit the entire hill because i don't know where they are i want it uh, I want them to feel like they're in danger, and I want the entire element to feel like they're in danger, right? So I'm not looking for accurate shots on, like, the, the top right over here or just to, yet, you know, hit the crest because I don't know if they're also down below on the rocks as well. So I'm just assuming because you always usually want to assume the worst. I'm assuming that they're all over this hill. And so I start spreading out rounds accurately. So keep an eye out for that. Watch the, uh, watch the burst let-ups. Watch me look for my tracers, readjust my rounds, and only... Only for that small amount of time do I let off the trigger just to re, uh, readjust my rounds and then watch how much I spread the uh, rounds about on the target because those are two very important things. Keeping up that rate of fire, suppressing them as much as possible and making sure my rounds are landing where I need to, where they need to go and spreading them out. So... So you saw... A very subtle movement right there, right? You saw me spread out the rounds. I yanked the weapon down for a split second, let off the trigger, watched the tracers, readjusted for higher. And so it's a really, really minute little thing you can do. Um, of course, if I had other MGs or if, you know, maybe the platoon wasn't in a worse position, I would have attempted to, you know, keep my weapon up for longer and keep that sustained fire going up. But at this point in time, I'm thinking, you know, my squad and... Perhaps the other squad are the only elements firing back right now. We need to appear like we're sending out a crap ton of rounds. We need to appear strong for this short amount of moment. I can't um, sacrifice that for sustained fire right now. I need to make them feel like they're going to be taking a lot of rounds because I need to decrease their fire. So as soon as I reload, you notice I'm pulling off the ridge, right? So the reason why I'm pulling off the ridge is because I don't want to be sitting out there with my bipod deployed reloading in the open because I'm just a sitting duck. Uh, if I wasn't under fire, or if this was a different situation, you know, I might have reloaded in place. Uh, maybe if I had better cover or, you know, the situation was, wasn't as dire as I said before. But right now, knowing that I'm the only PKM here and I'm pretty much the effective suppressive fire for the platoon, I know I need to stay alive. So I take no risks and I pull backwards off the hill before I even reload. Get cover. Get so we're still taking rounds. You still see those traces going right to left. So I know my job isn't done yet. I need to get back up there and I need to start throwing rounds again. One thing you notice me do right here is I displace just the tiniest amount. Instead of going back up exactly to my previous spot, I pick a slightly different spot. This is to throw them just the tiniest bit off their game, right? If even I move slightly left or right, it's better than going back to the same spot where I was just throwing tracers from before. So just moving, even minutely, increases your odds of surviving a, a firefight at this distance. So I set up the bipod again. And now because we've gotten those initial rounds out and we've kind of suppressed them, you know, we aren't taking as heavy fire from before. I set up again, except I'm looking for a little bit more accurate fire now. I pause. I'm not shooting. I hold my gun straight. I'm looking for movement. That's what I'm doing right now. When I'm not moving my gun, you'll see me hold the gun completely still, my screen completely still for a couple seconds. What I'm doing is I'm looking for my new movement in the distance because movement draws the eye. Uh, you don't want to be moving your gun around other way looking for people because then the movement gets lost in your own movement. So you'll see me just hold the weapon straight for uh, every now and then. And then uh, I go back to strafing the hill, right to left, left to right, all the way up the hill, all the way down the hill. 
Once again, I hold still, looking for movement. We aren't taking rounds, so I can let off the trigger a little bit. And I'm just looking for uh, targets right now. And, uh, you know, I see a couple movement. Uh, I, I see some movement up there, so I, I take more accurate shots. But I've effectively pushed them off this hill. They've broken off. And uh, you can see how effective this fire was to them when we play the enemy's perspective. Because right now you're thinking, oh, they just pulled off the hill. Well, we're going to play the uh, second perspective, uh, which is Muff's perspective, who was on the other hill. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at that. If you would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon where you can get cool rewards or buy games like Squad on Humble Bundle by using the links in the description below. So as you can see, it was a full squad up on this hill, uh, which was led by Bird Person on the opposite team. And uh, so I'm pretty much behind this rock right here. They can't see us. However, our first squad is about here and our second squad is about here. I know it's a little bit hard to see with the graininess and uh, how far they are. But uh, that's essentially where they are. So they get called out. You'll hear Muff call out the targets. And then uh, you'll see the ambush initiate from their perspective. Not at all. Is that enemies? Enemies, 30. On running track, across the road. Track, on the road, on the road. 30 running across the road. See him? Copy. So you notice, uh, you, you can see us crossing the road here. The good thing that Militia did right here is they did not engage right away. They held their fire, they were disciplined, because if they had engaged us as soon as we popped out with our first squad, what would have happened is, first squad would have just pulled right back into the river. But if you wait, if you're patient, and you engage when they're in the kill zone, which is essentially dead center of the river with zero cover, and where they're committed to where they have to cross, if you have that amount of patience, you can cause a lot more chaos and a lot more casualties, because they don't have the option of just ducking back in. You also don't want to, you know, and conversely, you don't want to wait till the, you know, all the way across the river before you engage because then they'll just finish crossing the river so they were extremely patient they zeroed their weapons they got everything set up so they waited until they were about dead center in the river and you can see entire squad crossing right now that's first squad rockets go out they engage and that's two squads in the open right now that's our first and second squad getting engaged uh, so first squad is essentially this far second squad is essentially on the left and they're caught dead in the river and this is just terrible so you can see how badly they had us ambushed so you'll see this is the rock that i used as uh as the pkm and you'll see how effective the suppressive fire is on the reverse side you can see another lmg you know uh, from third squad try to put fire on and try to do their best to suppress and uh, decrease the effect of fire from the squad but uh you know it's it's much different having a pkm shoot at you than a, just just a rpk and there you see my rounds start coming out muff tries to return fire and you see i'm just spreading these rounds out i never saw these guys and instantaneously they're starting to pull off the hill because my rounds are just coming at them i'm shoot i'm just laying down on the trigger i'm spreading it all over the hill because i'm not necessarily seeing these guys i don't know exactly where these guys are but i'm just trying to get this entire squad to feel like th i can see them right that's the entire impression i want to leave is i see you i'm coming to kill you they might not necessarily know that but you can see here that they're feeling it they feel like shit we got to pull back He's engaging us. He sees us. That PKM is lighting up this hill. And you can see I push him off the hill uh, momentarily. Um, and that's all the breathing room we need to get first and second squad across the river and third and fourth to set up the base of fire. Right? So effectively, we're able to decrease the amount of fire that they're putting out. For example, if we were crossing continuously without... Um, Without suppressive fire, they just keep laying on us, right? So that's why you return fire. You don't just run. You don't just, you know, panic. You need to instantaneously put pressure back on the enemy, which is what we did uh, as fast as we could. Now you can see Muff is still trying to look for me. He's trying to tap me out, which is why when I moved from that left position slightly a couple meters to the right, why it's so important. Because he's looking for that first place where I shot, right? And even though I'm not there, he might still put rounds there because he thinks I'm not going to move. But if I shift just a little bit to the right or to the left or just move around a little bit, especially with that bipod, with that LMG, with those tracers, it's really going to increase your odds of surviving because people are always going to look where you last shot, right? Because that's the last reference that they know. So even if you mix it up a little bit, it does a good job of uh, changing up the game enough to where you have a better chance of surviving. So uh, you can see Muff still, still trying to find me and uh, we effectively push him off the hill with that fire. Uh, you can hear those snaps coming overhead, and especially in the One Life events, that'll scare the crap out of you, right? Because you don't want to die. You don't want to catch a 7.62 round of the dome, especially if it's coming at you, uh, you know, rapidly and stuff like that. So...
that's just a small example of suppressive fire, how we use it in squad ops. And, you know, maybe you can use it in uh, vanilla as well. There's certain situations where I still use suppressive fire in vanilla as well. So once again, a couple things to take away from the video. Number one, react to contact. Cover, engage, identify target, maneuver, right? Those things need to happen. That's the best chance that you're going to have uh, when, you, when you get engaged. You don't want to just run away. You don't want to just stand up and shoot. Get cover first. Re-engage the enemy. Even if you can't spot them, just throw rounds out because they don't know that you don't see them. They're assuming that you see them because rounds are coming their way. So they're like, oh, shit, he sees me. We need to get off this hill or we need, we need to pull back or I need to sit behind this rock a little bit more. But uh, you're just throwing rounds in through the trees. You're throwing rounds on the hill. You might ne not necessarily see them, but it's a psychological thing. That's why you re-engage the enemy. Uh, and then uh, from there, identify when you get the chance, right? You saw that second time I reloaded. Uh, I, I pretty much just, I took more accurate shots. I wasn't so heavy on the trigger. Uh, I, I started looking for more, um, more targets, more accurate shots, because the initial engagement, remember that initial first couple minutes of the ambush, that's the most crucial. Where they're going to be putting out the most fire, looking to cause the most casualties, and where I, on the reactive side, need to be doing my best job to keep them suppressed, which means... Laying down on the trigger, suppressing a wide area, and doing my best to keep my guys alive. So I hope this video kind of demonstrated the effectiveness of suppressive fire in squad ops. So if you're a squad ops participant, you can kind of take something away from this. Uh, and even if you're, you're in vanilla, um, you can kind of understand uh, what suppressive fire is like for vanilla. And I actually have a vanilla representation of suppressive fire and bounding out of contact and react to contact. And I'll do that in a later video. I was on a Narva vanilla game, so I'll show that, guys. Uh, I'll show that video with you guys and you guys can see how that works in a vanilla public environment because it does work I know a couple people say oh, you know suppressive fire doesn't work at all It works well if you know how to use it and you know what you're doing and you know You don't go too much into it and you just keep things simple in public play, right? So I hope this video helped demonstrate suppressive fire the effect of it uh, How to use it take away some tips as an LMG or MMG gunner, right? Spread that fire around lay heavy on the trigger in the beginning uh, look for secondary accurate shots Pull back when you're reloading. Make sure you're safe when you're reloading. And displace. Displace is one of the most important things I can teach you guys. Because too often, well, players, both in publics and in squad ops, they'll just keep shooting from the same window. Shoot from the same position. Shoot from the same corner. And then eventually, that's going to get you killed. Because they're going to follow those chasers back. They're going to find out where you are by sound or whatever it is. So keep mobile. Uh, you don't have to shift like ants, ants in your pants all over the place. But just, you know, be mindful of, you know, the dangers to you, the environment around you, and how you can utilize it. Uh, to keep yourself alive. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one.